Well, hi guys. Uh, we're going to do improper integrals today, which uh, and they're going to be improper because they're going to either be going all the way out to infinity or there's going to be a discontinuity inside what we're trying to integrate. And those are actually very difficult to see. The first one is really easy to see. So we're going to title this here, Improper Integrals. Okay, so let's look at the most obvious version. Let's say we wanted to look at the graph of 1 over x squared, just the right-hand side. We wanted to take a look at this graph. And let's say we wanted to find the area starting like at 1. Starting at 1. And usually what we would do is we would stop somewhere over to the right, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5. But let's just say we wanted to find the area underneath the curve from 1. And, and let's just say we wanted to keep going all the way out to infinity. And so what we would want to know is, is this an infinite amount of area? Or does this graph approach the x-axis fast enough so that the area becomes negligible and we actually have a finite number for our integral? Now, we are not allowed to do this integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared. What, are we, what we are not allowed to do is we can't integrate with a discontinuity. So there's a little trick to this. The trick is we are going to say that we're going to stop at some value, some finite value. In the book it uses a b, so I'll use a b as well. And then we're going to evaluate the integral and then at the end we will uh, we'll take that value b and we're going to push it all the way out there to infinity with a limit. So we're going to be combining limits and integration. So here is the idea to answer this. We will say we, we are going to do the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to b of 1 over x, x squared. So we're tricking our integral. We're like, hey, this value b is going to be finite for now. Later on, we'll let b go to infinity. But for now, so we can integrate, we're going to let it be b. So we're going to go ahead and answer our integral. Sorry if I sound a little stopped up. I'm, okay, well, it's because I am. Anyway, um, of course, to integrate this, we've got to go find an antiderivative. And the antiderivative for 1 over x squared is negative 1 over x. And we want to evaluate this between 1 and b. So let's just keep the limit there. Okay, let's plug the top number in. That's negative 1 over b minus, then plug the bottom number in, negative 1 over 1. Okay, let's clean that up just a little bit. Not doing the limit yet. So I'll have negative 1 over b plus 1. So that's about as far as I can simplify my integral. Now once I've answered my integral, I'm going to let the limit as b approaches infinity. So if I'm going to push b way to the right on the x-axis, that means that this value, negative 1 over b, is going to approach 0. And so since that value approaches 0, that means that this is a finite area. We're going to say that it's 1. We can also say that the area converges to 1. We're going to use that word converge if we get a finite answer. So you might take the you might take the integral from 1 to 999 and then the integral from 1 to 9999 and you can see on your calculator it's getting closer and closer to 1. You can actually on your calculator integrate from 1 to infinity. There's an infinity button on what is it? I think it's diamond catalog. And you can actually do that on your calculator and it will tell you that the value is 1. <coughs> Okay, so the, this idea had an infinity in the integral, and when that happens, you must go through this setup like this. Okay, so let's do another example where it's not so obvious and a little trickier. What if I wanted to do the integral from negative 1 to 0 of 1 over x squared? Now that does not look too difficult, but one problem is at 0, if you plug 0 in for x, you're going to get 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. This graph has a vertical asymptote at 0. See this graph does this 
little vo it's like your volcano graph I guess is what I usually call it so this is what it does so what we're going to do is we want to start here at negative one and we want to find the area under the curve and you can see that right here since that vertical asymptote this graph goes all the way up to infinity so I've got basically this hole there so we want to see you know how much area is in here including all this stuff up here going all the way up so we're going to do the same thing and notice this was trickier though because I've got you know and I don't have infinity in my integrand or my integral but I do have an infinite discontinuity at zero at one of these endpoints. So the idea here is we're going to stop at some value b and we'll let b approach zero. So it's the same kind of process. When you integrate you can't have a discontinuity in, in the interior anywhere or at the endpoints. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the limit as b approaches zero, but b is going to be approaching zero from the left hand side, so we're going to do a little negative sign there. Integral from negative one to b of one over x squared. So let's go ahead and go about answering this integral. The limit as b approaches zero from the left, antiderivative, negative one over x, evaluated between negative one and b. So we'll plug the top number in, negative 1 over b, and then minus plug the bottom number in, negative 1 over negative 1. Alright, so let's uh, clean this up just a little bit. This will be the limit as b approaches 0 from the left of negative 1 over b those two negatives make a positive and then minus one so that's what we have okay so let's now evaluate our limit we're gonna let B approach zero from the left so they're gonna be really small numbers and they're gonna be really small negative numbers and so let's just you know if you plug in like a point one negative you're gonna get a positive value but what's gonna happen is as B approaches zero this is going to approach negative one over negative zero basically and it's going to go to infinity so negative one divided by an itty bitty negative number is going to approach positive infinity and we are going to get what's called a divergent integral so here trying to find all this area is impossible it actually grows to infinity so before we went from one to infinity and there was a finite area now we went from negative one to zero and there's just it's there's too much area there so the integral does what we call diverges the um, only other example that I could think of oh wait there's an announcement Student, oh, the, end of your the time is currently <laughs> All students should be out of the building or in the building with an adult or sponsor. I repeat. Okay, I had to pause that. I apologize about that. Okay, the only other kind we're going to look at is if we have the discontinuity is, is in between the numbers. So if I did something like purple, like the integral from negative 1 to 2 of 1 over x cubed dx. This looks very easy. Doesn't look like there's any problem at all. However, you will need to know that at 0, which happens to be in the interior of this interval, this graph has a vertical asymptote. See, this graph looks something like this. It's, it's a little bit like 1 over x, except it hugs the x-axis a little better. Looks like that, and then it looks like this. Uh, anyway, you could graph it on your calculator. That's what that graph looks like, basically, just without all of the messy stuff. <laughs> and so at zero, I, uh, I have this vertical asymptote. So what we have to do is we have to split this up into two, two different integrals. We're going to split it up across the, the discontinuity. We'll go from negative one to zero of one over x cubed, and then plus the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 over x cubed dx. Now, 
this integral again, um, this first one, uh, the, this first integral, negative 1 to 0, 1 over x cubed, we can take a look at that by doing the limit as b approaches 0 from the left of the integral from negative 1 to b of 1 over x cubed. And then this other one is going to be the limit as b approaches 0 from the right from b to 2 of 1 over x cubed. So that's that's the idea behind that. So you have to check for infinite discontinuities at the interior points as well as at the endpoints. So that those are two different situations where it might not be so obvious. Anyway, uh, we'll practice this tomorrow in class. This probably will require a lot of practice on your part. So uh, make sure you stay focused tomorrow in class, and I'll see you then.